Every once in a while a video game comes along that captures you absolutely into a world of the creator's vision. It sets standards of what a game should offer to the player, set new limits and break ground previously untouched. A sequel in this matter which his predecessors have set an incredibly high bar, coming onto the scene and almost singularly creating a genre upon its release. A great video game will transport the player on a journey, peppered with a range of emotions, obstacles and rewards throughout. A great game will stay with you for many years, offering limitless replayability, discussion and nostalgia. This game for me is Resident Evil 4, and in this retrospective review we are going to cover why I think that it is one of the greatest video games ever made. First released in 2005 exclusively to the Nintendo GameCube, Capcom's Resident Evil 4, or Biohazard 4 as its official title in Japan, met critical acclaim almost instantly with the overwhelming positive reviews for many elements such as its narrative, voice acting, gameplay and its characters. It received multiple awards at the 2005 Game of the Year Awards, and was thought of by many at the time as the peak of evolution for the survival horror and third-person shooter genres. I'm a big fan of the Resident Evil series to begin with, but um, RE4, it, it, it set new standards in the survival horror. This is uh, the best example ever, obviously, of a uh, franchise being recreated and being reborn and having it come out almost perfectly. It was the most immersive game I played this year, by far. That game was a lot of fun. It, it, it was different. It didn't feel like any other Resident Evil that came before it. It felt like not only a new version of itself, a new version of the franchise, but a new type of game altogether. Like It, it, it went beyond what survival horror um, had been defined as. So I, that, was, that was a lot of fun. I liked the, every bit of it I liked. Its popularity spanned the game across other platforms, such as the PlayStation 2, as well as multiple remasters, which we will get to later in this video. Resident Evil 4 took a whole new direction with its style of gameplay, taking the traditional elements of the previous Resident Evil titles such as the fixed camera angles and item management, and replacing them with an over-the-shoulder third-person perspective, a more precise freehand aiming system, quick time events and an overall more action-orientated combat system. But first to understand why these changes made such an impact, we must first understand the history of the franchise itself. Hey, come here. Originally released in 1996, Resident Evil is now commonly known as the first popular survival horror game. It focuses on a team of Special Operative Stars members, taking shelter in a seemingly abandoned mansion. After splitting up to find their comrades, they soon learn that the mansion and its grounds are infested with zombies and other unnamely creatures. You take control of one of two playable characters, working your way through the mansion, solving puzzles and uncovering secrets of the mansion's past. You have to play the game smart, as there was a limited inventory system in which you could only carry a few items at a time, and only store away or rearrange these at save rooms. Save points, on the other hand, required an ink ribbon in order to save your progress, way before the days of unlimited retries and auto-saving. You had to plan ahead to make it through these games. The camera system was fixed, making it more atmospheric and cinematic in some cases. This also heightened the tension, as you weren't always able to see the whole of your surroundings. This coupled with the tank controls made a very distinct gameplay style. It was more of a tense slow burn than the horror games of today. This is a system gamers adapted to and learned to master over the next couple of entries. Resident Evil 2 released in 1998 introduced us to Raccoon City, a larger playground than the first game, featuring multiple new areas, such as the police station, an underground lab facility, and the streets of the city itself. This was a revolutionary move, and would become a staple of the later games featuring multiple locations. We are introduced to our two main playable characters, Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield, Chris's sister. 
They are separated after a car accident and are forced to find out what is happening with the zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. The tank controls and fixed camera angles make a return, so do the puzzles, boss fights and ink ribbons. The situations and threat levels seem to have increased dramatically though. We are also introduced to Ada Wong, a returning character important to Leon. The game again received a lot of praise for its bold new features and expanded environments. It took all the elements of the original and built upon it. More enemies, more bosses, larger environments and more weapons. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, released in 1999, takes place around the same time as the events of Resident Evil 2. It features a new protagonist, who is struggling to escape the zombie-infested Raccoon City. The game was originally planned to be more action-orientated, but it still follows all the original gameplay mechanics as its predecessors. This game, however, features a new kind of enemy, the Nemesis. An antagonist who periodically appears throughout the game, giving you the option to fight or flee. This was a big new development, as it was more of a pursuing boss rather than one stage, keeping the tension levels heightened, not knowing when he may next appear. Your choices throughout the game also do have an effect on the story's ending. It sold over 300 million copies worldwide and was praised for its enhanced graphics and involvement of a pursuing threat. There were a few PlayStation 2 titles released after, between the release of Resident Evil 3 and Resident Evil 4, such as Outbreak Files and Resident Evil Code Veronica X. However, we will not be focusing on any of the side games, and will be jumping straight into Resident Evil 4. Development began for Resident Evil 4 as early as 1999. Originally intended for the PS2, the development took place over a long period in which four versions were worked on and scrapped before finding the correct formula for the game we know and love today. The game was later announced as a GameCube exclusive, part of the Nintendo 5, five titles which were announced in 2002 as a way to boost sales for Nintendo's new console, which wasn't making targets as intended. You can view footage online of early development gameplay of some versions. One most notably is known as Resident Evil 3.5. It shows the game's returning protagonist from Resident Evil 2, Leon S. Kennedy, navigating the dimly lit halls of a gothic castle, facing what seems to be supernatural enemies. A dramatic change from the flesh-eating zombies of the previous titles. Leon S. Kennedy makes a return to the series, being promoted after the heroic events of the Raccoon City disaster in Resident Evil 2 six years ago. Former Raccoon City police officer Leon is now working in the protection of the President's family. After the President's daughter Ashley Graham is abducted, Leon travels to a rural village in Spain after receiving intel that a girl has been spotted there who fits her description. After questioning some locals, he finds out that there is something terribly wrong in this village. The villagers all seem to have been brainwashed or under some kind of mind control from a higher power. Leon discovers a religious cult is at hand, known as the Los Illuminados. Los Illuminados? <laughs> That's a mouthful. Which is Spanish for the Enlightened Ones. This cult is led by Osman Sadler, a crazed power-hungry religious fanatic who is using an unearthed parasite, known as the Las Plagas, to take over the villagers' minds. He intends to infect the president's daughter with the parasite and send her back to the United States, which she will then infect the president with a master parasite bringing Sadler closer in his plans to dominating the world. Shortly after a run-in with some hostile locals, Leon is captured by the village chief, alongside a mysterious character, Luis Serra, a former researcher of the Los Plagas parasite. Leon is infected, and after rescuing Ashley, held hostage in an abandoned church, they must work together to find a cure and escape the clutches of this evil cult. Whilst manoeuvring through deadly sinister locations, they must survive many further obstacles, facing hordes of mindless armed minions, abominable giant creatures, and other mysterious figures with ulterior motives. Its story encapsulates the main ingredients found in the previous Resident Evil titles, such as initial mystery and intrigue, a sense of dread escalating as further clues are unravelled, and then the triumphant saviour of the day climax. However, Resident Evil 4's story, gloriously represented through state-of-the-art graphics, voice acting and cutscenes, seemed to take more of a back seat next to its new gameplay style, 
which I feel is the driving force behind the game's enjoyment. The locations throughout the game are extremely detailed and feel very realistic, helping keep you immersed in this new world. As you push on through the game, you'll make your way through dusty trails, leading through skeleton tree woods, abandoned derelict huts and farmhouses, to secret underground tunnels leading to eerie torch-lit churches and great lakes, pushing on through thunderstorms to grand ancient castle grounds atop volcanic chambers complete with mazes, prisons and traps at every turn heavily armed prison island featuring ancient ruins and secret laboratories giving creation to some of the most ungodly and unforgiving creatures. The game flows seamlessly between such extreme differences of scenery, but works so well at building the sense there's something much more sinister at work than is initially presented to you. The game's new combat system definitely takes advantage of allowing the player more choice in weapons and their abilities. There are whole new ways to upgrade your gear and weapons gradually throughout the game. This is utilised through a new sales and purchase system embodied in one of the most popular and memorable characters from the game, the merchant. Got something that might interest you. <laughs> the merchant appears near typewriters throughout the game, which the player saves their progress on. These save rooms and areas will allow the player to breathe a sigh of relief and regather their bearings as they come down from the white knuckle action and barrage of bloodthirsty enemies lurking on the grounds outside. The merchant purchases items and rare treasures you collect along your way, in turn paying you a high price, which then allow the player to purchase a range of pistols, shotguns, rifles, grenades, submachine guns and rocket launchers. You can also buy health sprays, Stocks for your guns provide better accuracy and lessen the kickback. You can expand the size of your attaché case, where you must store all your items in an organised system to take advantage of its full potential. The merchant will also allow you to upgrade your weapons at a cost. The weapon upgrades consist of firepower, firing speed, reload speed and capacity. These, along with the weapons, are unlocked as you progress through the story. The enemies become tougher as the game goes on, so you must purchase new guns and upgrades as you go to be fully prepared for the tasks ahead. You'll learn all weapons have different characteristics, so as you develop your own playstyle, you'll start to favour certain weapons and know which weapons work best against which enemies. When a weapon's full upgrade potential has been reached, it will give you an exclusive upgrade option, which can make the gun's firepower multiple times its full capability, or it will be able to hold an extremely large number of shells, cutting out such things as reload times and so on. The weapons all look fantastic and have a very detailed sound design, and all have great reload animations. Some weapons are console specific, and some are only unlocked from either completing the game on certain difficulty levels or reaching a certain score in one of the title's mini-games. You also unlock different costumes upon completion. Some of these have very useful features. Hey, what are you looking at? These can be difficult to obtain, but extremely worthwhile, as most are incredibly powerful or have features such as unlimited ammunition, making your next playthrough of the game a completely different experience. The game does also feature a new game plus mechanic, where the player can start a new round once he has reached the end of the story, but with his fully upgraded arsenal and maxed out health. This means replaying the game is very rewarding, as you'll be able to adapt to the mechanics more and more each time, but also saving a lot of the hassle you may have experienced the first playthrough, as your encounters with enemies will become easier, and your constant search for health and ammo will no longer be as necessary. The game's popularity spread like wildfire throughout the fanbase over the coming years. And is still being discovered by a new generation of players thanks to the game's multi-platform availability. As of now, the game is available on the Nintendo GameCube, the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo Wii. A HD remaster was later to release bringing the game up to 720p for both PS3 and Xbox 360. A PC HD version was later to release and within the last couple of years a new HD remaster is available for next gen consoles such as the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One featuring enhanced textures and allowing the game to run at a beautiful 1080p. You better 
The game has a general score of 96 out of 100 on Metacritic, indicating its universal acclaim. Upon its release, the game reviewers were scoring the game as near perfect. IGN, GameSpot, Nintendo Power and Edge all gave the game scores ranging between 9.5 and 10. In 2008, the readers of IGN ranked Resident Evil 4 as the greatest video game of all time. The GameCube copy sold over 320,000 copies in North America within its first 20 days of release, and Europe came in as selling 200,000 copies within its first month. It is currently ranked as the fourth best-selling Resident Evil title in the series, having sold over 8 million copies worldwide across all platforms. Some releases had additional extras, such as exclusive console designs, steelbook cases, and limited edition chainsaw controllers. The game has been a huge influence upon third-person shooters throughout the 2000s. The new gameplay and alterations of style helped introduce the series to a whole generation of gamers who were not familiar with the originals. The creators were starting to get bored with it, and many moved to other projects. So I spoke to Mikami-san, the director, and we talked about reshaping the series and winning back the fans, as well as winning over new fans who thought they would never play a Resident Evil game. So, in order to revitalize the series, we've given it a complete makeover. Its over-the-shoulder third-person perspective and precision aiming mechanics spawned a whole wave of upcoming games who utilize these features, such as Gears of War, Dead Space, and many others. Some believe the game's influence has tainted the series' future releases, as both Resident Evil 5 and 6 are not usually placed in higher praise above 4, as these titles took even more of a departure from the original survival horror formula and became more action-orientated games throughout. The fan outcry seems to have been heard by the creative teams at Capcom though, as Resident Evil 7, again featuring a new gameplay style now being played in the first person mode, which had not been done before, excluding Resident Evil Dead 8 and the others. It is a much more traditional survival horror game, as it puts you in a much more fragile position, with limited resources and has more emphasis on exploration and puzzle solving. In my opinion, Capcom hit a creative high when making Resident Evil 4. It was an alignment of all the correct ingredients coming together to create a new balance of unsettling horror and high intensity action. An experience which would please veteran fans and newcomers alike. It was a golden age of gaming where years of work and dedication went into every possible detail to release a product that would become loved by fans globally for years to come. You'd be hard pressed to find someone who has not played this at some point in their life or at least remembered the hype of this game when it was first released. I remember first playing this game when a friend of mine got a GameCube and this game for Christmas in 2005. I only had a PlayStation 2 at the time, and had completed the previous titles, my favourite up until that point being Resident Evil 2. He would usually bring the GameCube round in the school holidays, and we would play Super Smash Bros or Super Mario Sunshine. Being a huge horror geek though, I had to play this new Resident Evil. He brought the game round one Saturday, and it blew my mind. Everything about it seemed so new and intense and different. I loved everything about it. I can still remember now just taking turns running through the village section at the start of the game, with this pistol being hunted down by Dr. Salvador, and absolutely cowering in fear at the sound of that chainsaw. Over the coming months I found out about the PlayStation 2 release, and saved up my pocket money to get hold of a copy. I remember the exact day I went to buy it. I remember the game store, that's sadly no longer there anymore, the bus journey there, and just the utter joy of picking up that steelbook special edition, with the smeared blood handprint, the rust detailing, and that free miniature strategy guide you got inside. I'd never seen a game case like it, it was like a work of art in itself. Over the next few years I'd completed the game multiple times on all difficulty levels, completing the new side quests as well such as separate ways and spending hours upon hours trying to unlock the hand cannon on the mercenaries mode. I have since purchased an exclusive Chrome GameCube console and controller, embroidered with a Resident Evil 4 logo, the exclusive chainsaw controller for the PS2 version, and both HD releases for both the PS3 and Xbox One to obtain all possible trophies or achievements. 
I have made it an effort to complete it on all platforms, and have done so now after completing it on the Wii and PC versions. There is a phone version of the game, but I don't really count that in the same regard as the main title, as I believe the full main game to be a masterpiece, and playing it on a phone would just lessen the experience for me. I have scoured the net for merchandise and have bought bobbleheads, action figures, replicas of Leon's leather jacket from the beginning of the game, and promotional items such as the strategy guides and other rare posters. To say I'm obsessed with this game would be an understatement. I believe like a true classic it never ages. For any viewers of this video who may have never given the game a try, I cannot recommend it enough. Resident Evil 4 is a masterclass in its own right and has so much to offer. So to any nostalgic fans wishing to wander down memory lane, or any newcomers to the series looking to purchase it off the recommendation of either myself, friends or family, I salute you in your support to keep the torch burning for a truly outstanding video game which has proved to stand the test of time and hold a place dear in fans' heart such as myself. I hope you have enjoyed my review of Resident Evil 4. It's a game I love to discuss and recommend. I hope I have given it its due props. If you have enjoyed my review, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos. I do also have full Let's Plays of both Resident Evil 2 and 4 on this channel for anyone looking to see more of the game. Your support of my channel and videos is greatly appreciated.